Hi. Hello. How you doing? Good. Great to hear. So, this is the Apple TV 4K 2017 model. And this is the Apple TV 4K 2021 model. Want to know the differences between each of them? Want to know whether the upgrade really is worth it? Oh, you do? That's good. Keep watching. I would like to start by saying that all of the things I unbox on this channel, I have purchased myself. Nothing is sent to me for free and nothing is sponsored. Well, at least not yet anyway. So I will tell you exactly what I think of the items and I'll also explain why I bought them. As although I get to make videos out of the things I buy, I don't just buy them to make the videos if that makes sense. So I suppose the uh, first thing we should do is get the Apple TV 4K 2021 unboxed. It still surprises me to this very day when talking to people about the Apple TV that they think it's like a, like a full on TV that Apple have made their own television set, which as cool as that may be, this obviously isn't that. The Apple TV is like a set top box that connects to your TV and uh, then dual network and basically brings the internet to your television, giving you access to millions of apps, games, and services that you wouldn't normally have access to from your TV. Although having said that, with smart TVs getting better and better nowadays, is there really any need for a set-top box or something like this? Hello darkness, my old friend. I don't actually know. Let me know what you think down below. Sexy box as you'd expect from Apple. And then we are presented with the, uh, the set-top box, the remote, which we'll get onto in a bit. Literature, USB to lightning cable, power cable, and that's it. So looking at the, uh, the box itself, looking at the back, you will see nothing has really changed. We still have the HDMI 2.0 port, uh, gigabit ethernet, and the power port, but Inside, something has changed. Inside this, we now have the A12 Bionic chip, whereas in, in this, the 2017 model, this has the A10 version. What does that mean? In simple terms, it means that this, the new box, is capable of processing a lot more things, meaning upscaling video to 4K is improved and faster. Uh, it will play games a lot smoother and apparently is able to offer higher frame rates and so on. This particular version also is a Bluetooth 5.0 and is ready for Wi-Fi 6. And both this and the 2017 models both support Dolby Vision and HDR, although this supports HDR 10 for that crisp, fluid video. But again, both of them also support Dolby Atmos for that immersive, room-filling sound experience. Other than the processor inside this, what house has really changed with the main unit? Nothing really. So why did I buy the newer version? Especially as I don't play games and probably won't notice the faster CPU. I'll tell you, one, I bought it because this version randomly stops outputting a signal when turning the TV on. So I then have to force a reboot on this for it to then be picked up by the TV, which is annoying. Two, this comes with this, the new Siri remote, which I found out after researching for this video, I could have just bought on its own, separately, without buying a whole new Apple TV. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the previous design, and it is uh, small, lightweight, and it relies on the use of this touchpad at the top. And this, this little thing right here, this is what I have a problem with. The touch is overly fiddly to use and extremely sensitive, and gave the whole experience a negative feel if that makes any sense. And I know it sounds silly, but look, look, I sit down and watch TV when I want to relax, when I want to switch off. So I don't want problems or annoyances with the remote control spoiling that time, especially when I'm sitting down to Netflix and chill. This is the all new Siri remote control, apparently crafted from a single piece of aluminum. 
and it is sexy as hell. So it looks like they've uh, moved the Siri voice activation button to the side, which is handy because I would always accidentally push this on the older remote. And it looks like it still charges at the bottom via a lightning to USB cable. It still has the play pause button volume up and down, uh, but also now has the inclusion of a back button for skipping back through menus, which is very, very handy. And also now has a mute button, which again is very handy because previously you'd have to keep turning it down to mute it. Now, one press of a button. I like it. I like it a lot. The touchpad at the top has now been uh, been replaced with this five-way direction button thing, uh, which has clickable buttons and is touch, so you can literally cycle through. And that kind of reminds me of the old original iPods that you would circle your thumb around to, to flick through things. Overall, it is certainly bigger in comparison to the original Apple Moat and is also thicker and more weighty, which gives that feel of quality and, and substance in your hand and it's also worth mentioning for those that uh, used to use the old remote for gaming that this doesn't have a gyro built in like this one so it's not going to sense your movements etc but that doesn't affect me because when I do play games which is not very often, not very often at all, I use this which is the uh, Steel Series Nimbus game controller and it's uh, built specifically for Apple TV and connects via Bluetooth. So that's an initial look and unboxing of the new Apple TV 2021 4K. Forgot to mention this is the 64 gig version and they do come in a 32 gig version. So now it's unboxed. Uh, let's go and set it up and see if I can actually notice any performance differences. Oh, and also I'm very excited to try out the new auto calibration tool that lets you use your iPhone's cameras to read the color from the TV and then it will auto adjust for the best picture. It looks very cool in the videos, but it'll make sense when I show you. So uh, let's go and test it out. It's hot in there. Right, now you've seen how much effort it takes to set up a little uh, studio lighting rig in the living room. Let's plug it in. Okay, here we are from start to finish, the setup of the new Apple TV 4K on my LG SPX blah, 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 blah. Video about this TV, guess what, can be found. So first things first, let's get it plugged in. Existing Apple TV out, new Apple TV in. So now this is the bit I was nervous about, whether it's gonna work seamlessly with my uh, Philips Hue sync box. So let's turn the telly on. It's found a signal. What language is that? Just found the remote without any need to pair it, which is good. You set up your Apple TV, set up with an iPhone or set up manually. And here's that iPhone. Gotta love a bit of two-factor authentication. There it is, Apple TV 4K is now set up. So let's try the thing I've been excited about and the auto calibration, shall we? Okay, it's automatically popped up on my phone and asked me about color balancing. It says it's preparing, hold your phone close. Okay, that worked quick and easy again. So let's have a look at the results. Original, balanced. What do you think? Let me just switch between the two. Wowzers. Oh, it could just be like a placebo effect because it's a new Apple TV. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the old Apple TV plugged in. I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to set it up and I'm going to show you like a, a side by side of exactly the same video so that you can see the difference. And I'm going to split the screen and do something really clever or at least that's what I'm going to try and do. So as you've just seen, a comparison side by side of which you can see the full video for that up here somewhere if you want to look at it in a bit more detail and pixel peep. But when I was filming them individually, watching them one at a time, I couldn't really see a difference between the two of them. And it's only when I bought them side by side in this video that I could clearly see there was a difference and mainly 
that relies around the colour because the 2021 has now been colour balanced. You can see there's a clear difference between the two of them there. Some of these shots though, such as this one, it's difficult to even see the difference. So from a colour point of view with colour balancing, the 2021 version, in my opinion, looks better. But what I found out from testing an Apple TV in my bedroom is that our colour calibration is now also available as a tool on the older version of the Apple TV, the 2017 version, and it did exactly the same and it does look better. I honestly cannot see a difference between the 4K between the 2017 version and the 2021 version. Maybe that's just my eyes because I am blind, but I can't really see a difference. Only difference I can see is between the colors after I've run the calibration. So is it worth you getting the 2021 model if you just want the Apple Siri remote? No buy this separately. Also, whilst testing and filming those, I found out that these, uh, this five-way button wheel thingy here also is touch. So you've got the benefits of both worlds. You can still use the touch if you prefer to flip through on the touch. Best of both worlds. So yeah, in all honesty, as I said in the description to this video, it was an impulse buy, uh, and I honestly wish I had just purchased the remote control. I love the remote. Can't say there's a huge amount of difference inversions. There you go. That's me unboxing, playing with, setting up and comparing the Apple TV 4K 2017 versus 2021. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, as always, don't forget to let me know in the comments box below. And also consider liking, it helps, subscribing if you're not already, and hit the bell to get notified when I upload new videos, which seems to be a bit more regular recently. Now I've got my life in check and I'm actually having some time to do stuff. Uh, so yeah, Thanks for watching. Goodbye, Internet. Put a shade on me, like they all hate on me. Don't bring that rage on me. Why they throwing shade on me, like they all shade.